This may be the earliest New Testament epistle, written perhaps about 45 AD. It's addressed by the New Testament Jacob, the Hebrew form of James, to the 12 tribes, meaning the early Jewish believers who had been dispersed throughout the Roman Empire. James' words are antiseptic. They sting a bit, but how they clean our wounded lives and provide the opportunity for true healing within, if we're willing to submit to his pungent correctives and practical directives. He explains what it means to really live as a child of God by faith. Several individuals in the New Testament are named James, but it's commonly held that the writer of this book was the brother of the Lord Jesus. An unbeliever during the Lord's life, according to John 7, verse 5, he came to faith through the ministry of the resurrected Lord, as attested in 1 Corinthians 15, 7. James proved to be an effective and influential leader in the early church. Tradition says James was called camel knees by the early church, an affectionate testimony to the countless hours he spent in prayer. He would need that to write a book like this. Do you remember how Jacob spoke words of warning to his 12 sons in Genesis 49? Jacob says of Reuben, unstable as water, you shall not excel. James writes, he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Jacob says of Simeon and Levi, cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. James writes, the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And so they write, paralleling one another. James discusses in uncompromising terms the importance of enduring trials and the practical role of the Word of God in chapter 1. He stresses the impartial treatment of others and the relationship between faith and works in chapter 2. In chapter 3, he illustrates the right and wrong use of the tongue, lavishly illustrated with word pictures, and then contrasts earthly and heavenly wisdom. Chapters 4 and 5 wrestle with covetousness, its cause and cure, then paints a grim portrait of the self-inflicted wounds of those who seek to be rich. Chapter 4, verses 6 to 10, are an excellent checklist for victorious living. Chapter 5 continues with an exhortation to keep going through the hard times, through the Lord's tender mercies provided faithfully to us. The concluding section of chapter 5 gives instruction on the case of sickness when used as a discipline by the Lord. Such sickness should exercise the heart of the believer who, repenting, then asks the elders to join for prayer. As a demonstration of restoration to fellowship, oil, symbolizing the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, is applied to the now recovered saint. This last chapter presents Job as an example of endurance in suffering, then Elijah as an example of earnestness in prayer. Is James teaching on faith and works at odds with Paul in Ephesians 2, where he writes, By grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast? Of course not. Just read one more verse. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Faith exercised in Christ's finished work brings life. Faith demonstrated by our works shows life. Paul and James agree, so should we. And that's our scripture snapshot of the epistle of James.